description box but I got this thing for a dollar over at Menards to find out how just go check out that video and you'll have all the information that you need to know so right now I'm just setting it up I put some lemon in there that happiness one that you've seen that was a little cheap blend that I bought with another diffuser so um, and it had like geranium jasmine a more citrusy citrusy like um, aromas flavors or whatever you want to call them lemon and the myrrh and this is a LED lit one so it just changes color I think it's beautiful I even took the time to <laughs> I even took the time to go ahead and decorate this diffuser so that all of that right there I did that myself Okay, now let's get started. So right here, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm taking some unsalted butter, unsalted butter, and I'm gonna place that into the glass bowl. Like so. And next I'm gonna be chopping, getting ready to chop up my herbs. Well, my serrano pepper and my garlic right there that's some hot water to place my glass bowl in to kind of help soften the butter So just go ahead and start cutting that up. Now with us, we like our food a little bit on the spicy side. So we tend to leave the seeds. You know, I don't worry about taking them out anymore. And I find that I use way less hot sauce. Like I don't nearly go as, through as much hot sauce as I used to just by leaving the seeds of the jalapenos or not the jalapeno, but of the serrano pepper. I leave the seeds in there. If you do not like spice, feel free to take those out. Once you take those out um, and you refrigerate these peppers, they do, they're do they not that hot. But you will have to experiment because everybody has different heat levels. So just chop that all up. As fine or as chunky as you want. I leave it pretty chunky. That butter is softening right on up. So just take your garlic and your serrano pepper and place it inside the bowl with the butter. Right there we have some fresh parsley and cilantro. I just picked it from off the stems. used a very liberal amount of these greens and we pretty much eat cilantro and parsley in every meal. They, they just help with the flavor of everything of meat, vegetables, whatever you put them with they, they help to um, add and build more flavor to everything that I cook, all my dishes. So just cut this up fine as you want. And 
it's good practice to just incorporate as many herbs and stuff as you can in your dishes. So go ahead and place that parsley and then cilantro inside the bowl with the butter, the serrano, and the garlic. So now I've ran out of room in my bowl, so I'm going to transfer into the bigger bowl that I actually have the water in. And the butter is softening up fine. And it's going to be a while before I use it, so it will definitely be um, ready about time. About time when it's time for me to use it. <laughs> right here we got some oregano, a dried oregano, some smoked paprika. And I just eyeball everything, you guys. But if I had to guess, I would say uh, a teaspoon. So here I use season salt. You're free to use Himalayan or regular table salt here. Just not that much. Now here's black pepper. And I really only like a uh, fresh black pepper it's way more potent and you have to use less when it's fresh it's just the same thing as the Himalayan salt so now what I'm doing is just kind of helping that butter kind of melt a little bit more it's separated so it can be easier to melt. And that mixture is already very aromatic at that time. So now what I'm doing is I cut a lemon in half. I got rolled it on the counter for a second. And now I'm squeezing it on this uh, lemon juicer. And I'm just getting as much juice out as possible. Take the other half. Do the same thing. And if you have a juicer, just throw it in a juicer and juice it that way. Now you want to pour your lemon juice into the bowl of your vegetables and herbs with a butter mixture. This kind of keeps trying to separate that butter as you go. You can actually, if you're already cooking, like sit it near the stove where it's hot and it will help it melt a little bit but you want that flavor to start getting inside that butter now we're moving on to our haddock skinless fillets I'll show you guys the side pet uh, the side label on it for your fish palette it says it's a mild to moderate and taste mild taste with a moderate texture now I am new I actually just started eating um, baked fish I, at first I thought it was the most disgusting idea I had ever heard but one day I tried some haddock and ever since then I've been like oh my gosh I love baked fish I can't and I still can't believe it so now I never well I never really was eating fried fish but I really don't I, don't eat it. I just want it baked every time. I never eat fried fish. I don't know what about it had disgusted me so much, but I had never tried it till last year. And so far, Haddock is my favorite. Now you see that butter has been sitting um, to the side, melting with that lemon, especially when the lemon juice got in there. And it's beautiful right now with that orange and green and, you know, pops of butter coming through. It's very aromatic. And I actually should have made more to go around for everything that I had cooked. But I was able to make just this little amount stretch. So 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the juice on the fish. Just make it stretch for all of it or make a little bit over. So I'm going to take it like a spoonful and plop it onto each piece of the fish without the spoon because it doesn't want to come out the spoon. It doesn't just slide off. So just do it with your fingers without touching each piece as you plop it into the center. I'm sure I'm washing my hands. Okay, now sprinkle seasoned salt over the fish. Not too much, but once you start to see that like orange color, you know that's too much. Now I'm going hitting it back again with that black pepper, which you have to overdo it with the black pepper and the canes. And once you see the speckling on whatever meat you put the black pepper on, that's how you know that you put it in. Just look, you can see it. So just spread the mixture out over each piece of fish. Now I'm turning it over and make sure you guys, I, I see a lot of people when they tend to cook meats, they only season one side. And I don't know about anybody else, but I can tell the difference if one side is not seasoned. Both sides have to be seasoned. Lightly, but it has to be there. Black pepper once again. gonna go in with that smoked paprika and last but not least that seasoned salt lightly and that's all you need that's all you need so now flip back over your fish and use what has fallen to put on the fish because once you turn it over a little bit, it will fall away. So just use what's down there already. I like this. This pan was so big, I should have used something smaller. But for the purpose of filming, I wanted something with that was very wide with a um, wider viewing range. So cover it with aluminum foil, no water. And this is a non-stick pan. So if you had a stick pan, um, I would say put either a, a little bit of water, butter, or a little oil on the bottom of the pan so it doesn't stick or start burning, which this pan will do. So now I'm going to start my brown rice. So however much you need, go ahead and pour that in the water while it's cold. And I'm starting it up. I'm going to take a spoonful of that mixture. I'm going to Put it right in that pan. Black pepper. And all the seasonings, the same seasonings we've been using, but I got a special season I'll be using for the rice though. I've looked in the cabinet and I ran out of cumin. So I had to get the next best thing. Now here, 
that's oregano. Throw some of that in there. Aha, taco seasoning. Taco seasoning is like a cumin based um, seasoning. So to replace the cumin, you just use taco seasoning. Cumin and paprika, garlic powder pretty much makes that up. So now I've got some dinner rolls and I'm trying to get it to focus for you guys. So I'm just going to take a few of those out and set them into the pan, which I actually should have covered that pan with aluminum foil. Sometimes you start filming and you kind of skip things, trying to get right angles or, you know, hurry up. Especially while I was cooking a full uh, spread, so, so to speak. I guess right here I was going through a thing where I wanted everything to be uniform. So now I'm going to take some of that mixture and I'm going to spread it on to the dinner roll. And it really was, it really, really was such a beautiful color. Like everything was, looked awesome. I took some MCT oil which is a derivative of coconut oil, concentrated. And I just dipped the bottoms of each biscuit inside of there, or roll. Now I could have dusted the sides as well if I wanted to, but that was fine. They're still going to turn out fine. I just want them enough on there where it doesn't stick to that pan. And I used coconut oil, um, the MCT oil, because I did not want any more butter. So now I'm just taking some shredded cheddar cheese sharp cheddar cheese sticking them on top because I wanted a more like garlic cheesy garlic toast type of taste is what I was going for so then I used the cheese and onion powder for this and I also used I'm not sure if I showed it, but I also used a little bit of garlic powder. Just a little. And that looked good. No salt either, you guys. No salt for that part. So just stick those in the oven with the fish. And let those cook. So now my rice is upset that I've been moving it from eye to eye. But brown rice takes so long, so 
and it actually was well it was it was done last but not I also cooked corn too checking on the fish here and it's looking great now me not having so much experience with cooking fish I kind of like to really make sure that it's done because it's something that um, I haven't eaten a lot so I just like to make sure that it's well done let's plop it over and I like mine's brown like semi crunchy I suppose you could have stopped here but I really wanted to, to brown on that other side as well which was the top side and give I wanted to give both sides a chance to kind of marinate inside of that um, juice where all that flavor is So now here I have another pan with aluminum foil and I'm going to pour in some organic coconut oil. And as you see you guys with every, I started off with a base and I used that base inside of every dish and I varied each dish depending on what it was and what I knew would taste best with it. So now I'm going to actually season the oil that I just poured inside the aluminum foil. So I poured smoked paprika, my pepper, and I believe I put a little bit of uh, onion powder, not garlic powder. And look at that. So now you're just going to take your corn on the cob and just smear it inside of that sea oiled seasoning. And I use that coconut oil to once again um, kind of take taper off the amount of butter that I needed for everything. A half stick for four different dishes is not too bad, which I end up using a little bit more of that, of course. But to taper down, I like to substitute with oils where I can, especially with a coconut oil. Fun fact, only coconut oil and MCT oil which is from coconut oil so that's the same thing MCT oil and only butter here I'm checking on the rice still not done but only MCT oil and coconut MCT oil coconut oil and butter can put you into ketosis and look at those buns those rolls they came out beautiful perfect so those were done. I set those to the side. Now we're back on that fish and now it's done. And as you can see, it started the pan. It was just dry over there. So it started charring a little bit, but it's not to a point to where the fish was burned or anything. It's a nonstick pan. so. And the fish was not dry. And this rice is almost done. Um, I'm actually going to pour some of that water off of there. Put a little bit more butter. 
because it just didn't my extra sauce wasn't enough look I just put the rest of it in there I use some before so it can cook with it and I'm you make sure you put some in when it's when you're about to take it off more paprika I love paprika smoked paprika more pepper now this time I'm gonna use some table salt not too much and that's a big pan of rice but that was just enough and when I tell you guys this that rice was so 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 good So that was the end of the video. So now I'm just giving you guys some pictures of how everything came out. Another pick. Here's the full plate. Used another sliver of butter over the corn. And everything was delicious. I put some parsley on the plate and voila thank you guys for watching